Plastic. Plastics. Plastic. 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 Hi, my name is Evelyn and I'm an eco-feminist vegan who, as of this year, has gone zero waste or zero plastic. 2018, my trigger for why I wanted to go zero waste is that I read an article. And I'd read, you know, hundreds of articles, but this one really hit me for some reason. That Ireland was the largest producer of plastic per capita in the EU and that on average an Irish person produces 60 kilos of plastic per year. And the weight 60 kilos hit with me because I was like, that's how much I weigh. And I thought, if I'm an average Irish person, I'm producing my own weight in plastic every single year for as long as I live. This is my responsibility and decided I'm gonna give up plastic altogether. In terms of zero waste, there's a few different levels that you could be, some people produce absolutely no waste whatsoever. Some people produce only recyclable waste and I'd be somewhere in between. I do produce recyclable card and paper but I don't consume any plastic at all. I don't buy recyclable plastic or non-recyclable plastic. In all honesty, the hardest thing to give up was crisps. It didn't dawn on me until I gave up plastic that I can't go buy a packet of crisps on a whim. That was the most shocking thing for me. For everything else, I found an alternative. I found ways to find like things, basic things like toilet paper without plastic around them and fresh produce and pasta and rice and I can get it all. But it was quite a transition to realize I can't just buy lots of treats and snacks on a whim. It hasn't been that destructive to my life. It definitely hasn't made my life any worse. So you still socialize. I didn't become a hermit. I didn't stop meeting with people and going out and doing things. I just had to adjust my life, like preparing food to bring in to work, having lunches prepped. Changing where I shopped was really pleasant. Rather than going to Tesco, and buying all these products in plastic, I discovered new places where you could buy things like, an example is pasta. When I went to buy this pasta, it wasn't a case of grabbing it in plastic, not thinking about it and buying it, kind of like a zombie walking through this world. It was going to my local zero waste whole foods chain and asking someone to fill up my own container with pasta. And I loved that. It, kind of makes you much more of a conscious, sorry, a conscious consumer to slow down shopping and talk to someone and find out where your food is coming from and really think about it as you're shopping. My life did not get any worse when I stopped consuming plastic. I'm a typical Irish person in that I love my cup of tea and I found out that like keep cups, the amount of plastic used in this is the equivalent of 20 disposable cups. And I've been using this every single day for about two years now. So that's like over 700 uses. And when I think about if I had 700 disposable cups that have to go to landfill, I think this is a much better alternative. I'd never leave home without my keep cup so I can get a drink or get water or whatever I want. And I would usually have a snack with me so that rather than having to get something without thinking about it, something convenient and packaged, I have something with me, like bring a banana, bring a lunchbox with something. The hardest things to find for me were initially, I couldn't figure out where to get toilet paper not in plastic. Like if you buy toilet paper, you want it to be in a waterproof material really. And other things like soya milk, I couldn't find without a plastic nozzle, things like that. Eventually you figure it out. Initially, I was using them as compromise items, but then only in the last few months, I found a place that just had toilet paper that you could bring in your own reusable bag and bring it home with you. And in terms of milk, I have found cartons of milk that don't have the plastic nozzle, and I have figured out how to make my own oat milk at home, 
But there are items that are hard to source and you have to compromise with or you have to change your lifestyle around. Anyone who wants to become zero waste or reduce their waste or reduce the plastic they consume, my biggest piece of advice would be do your research on where to source new things, but more importantly, do your research as to why you should source new things. Because when I'm in the shop and I have an, a choice between loose potatoes or potatoes wrapped in plastic, what makes me go for the loose potatoes, it's not that I've brought my own lunchbox or I've brought my own cotton bag or I've brought this or brought that. What makes me reach for the loose potatoes is knowing how long that plastic would have been around in the world, knowing that it's going to be around for hundreds of years, knowing that likely it's going to end up floating in the ocean. It really is the images from the documentaries and from the photographers and the news articles that stick with you. You will be thinking about you know, that seal in Dunleary that had the piece of plastic wrapped around its neck. That, those images stick with you for life and that's what keeps you going. So, as much as you should do your research on where to source new items without packaging, more importantly, you must do your research as to why you should source new things without packaging. When people ask what Small Changes Whole Foods is, it's an ethical business with a conscience. Hi, I'm Pat Rice, owner of Small Changes Whole Foods Store in Drumcondra. Small Changes was uh, set up in 2010. Originally, we were based in Gorey in Wexford. We were there for four years and then we moved the shop up here in 2015. I've always been interested in this, this area. Uh, it's always been a passion of mine. Um, my background prior to this was in construction. So I was coming from an industry that didn't have very many ethics um, and with the downturn in the economy I lost my job so it became clear quite quite quickly that in order for me to get employment I was going to have to create my own and that's how it started in Gory. I guess in, in a nutshell small changes is all about giving the largest amount of people access to um, an ethical, um, sustainable lifestyle. It's based very strongly on the principle that nobody should be denied a sustainable lifestyle due to financial means. So we would work very hard with suppliers to make our product ranges as affordable and as accessible to everybody. From day one, we've always offered customers uh, refill options where they can reuse their containers for shampoos, for household cleaners. Anything liquid that we sell, we always refill. And then as the years gone by, we've introduced more refill options. We've moved into uh, food where people can bring in jars, containers, and we will fill them with uh, dried ingredients. All our fruit and veg has always been loose. Uh, the idea being that you come in, you pick up what, exactly what you want. If it's two carrots and a potato that you want, that's exactly what you get. So with that initiative, we're removing the need for unnecess very unnecessary packaging. We're also addressing the issue of food waste because you're not buying five kilos of carrots because it's marked down. Um, you're buying three carrots and you're using three carrots. We work very closely with an organic farm in Ballina Slow, uh, County Galway and they would, um, we would place an order, uh, it's picked that day and then it's sent up, up to us the next day. There's no packaging in, involved there. We also work with growers here in North Dublin. Um, we have a community exchange initiative where people who are growing in their back gardens, if there's a surplus there, they can come in, we barter and they get uh, credit here in, in the shop. We would look at the air miles that are involved. Uh, for example, avocados, when, when it's available, we would import them directly from Italy, likewise kiwis. Say in the last two years, there's really been a huge, very noticeable um, change in the demographics. And it's very encouraging because it's a very young demographic who have seized on this idea that it's really up to them because we've made a bags of it. So you guys are the generation that 
have had the guts and the courage to say we're not, we're not standing for this anymore. So the planet can't cope with the amount of pollution that has been produced already uh, by unnecessary packaging. I in good conscience can't look to my children and, the gener and their generation uh, and pass on the planet uh, worse than I found it. I'm a TD for your own area there in Dublin Bay North uh, and I'm Minister for Communications, Climate Action and Environment. Well Ireland has been reasonably successful in recycling. We're, we're probably ahead of a lot of European countries. We recycle about 34% of our packaging waste and we've committed to bring that up to 50% by 2025 and 55% by uh, 2030. So that is a steep uh, climb that we have to make. I think what that doesn't take into account is the need to reduce plastic waste uh, in the first place and the use of packaging. So one of the areas that I'm looking at as well as the recycling target is how can we actually get less use and I will be sitting down with, um, with the various both in the supply chain and in the supermarkets to see how do we set about reducing the amount because recycling is all very well but if we, if we don't create it in the first place. There are other things that have created problems. A lot of plastic that we now get uh, is not recyclable. It's only those hard plastics that are recyclable. And the reason for that is they're using mixed materials or they haven't been using materials that, uh, that can be easily recycled. So that is lost. Uh, we need to see, can we change those practices? In the very immediate thing I've done, it's looked at really you know, single-use plastics and trying, there's a list of 10 which very commonly end up in the marine environment. So we've introduced a ban on those from the 1st of January in government departments from the, first, uh, from the end of March throughout the public service. Uh, so we'll be no longer acquiring those. The very same day as we announced that decision, we announced also government committing to introduce uh, green procurement rules. So that means looking at you know, things like what, what sort of things do you uh, purchase, making sure that you don't purchase things that are single use, that you are very conscious about the, the whole of life, not only the short term cost, but the, the ultimate end of life. So you look at the whole life uh, cost from a, a social concept. Getting that thinking into the public sector and into public sector employees shows uh, government leading by example. I suppose citizens also have a role to play because you know the success of recycling depends on how much people segregate their waste and uh, you know take their plastic and bring it home and put it into um, containers where it can be recycled. We have problems with both contamination, where you know your people are mixing incorrectly in their in their bin, and we have problems with capture rates. In other words, that a lot of stuff is ending up in the black bin and uh, going to an incinerator or a landfill. So you know we can uh, get people to improve their practice. So you might say right through the supply chain, we have to look at the whole chain to see from the producer, but right right through to the consumer. Obviously, then the waste uh, charge system. We moved away from a flat rate to having to pay by weight or pay by lift. That wasn't to generate more money, it was to send a signal to people that if they can reduce the amount of waste, they're doing a positive thing and they will pay less. Uh, but that means you know, that they can, they, they separate. And you know, if, you, if you contaminate uh, a green bin with an appy or something, the whole green bin is lost. You know, so things like that, they're, they're, they're not supports, they're advice to people. Uh, and there's really good uh, stuff about how to manage your waste. I think so, and it's a very good to see the trawlers are involved and having a consciousness. And this reflects, you know, the very high levels of plastic pollution. I think it's 300,000 tonnes of plastic from the EU get into the oceans each year. That's an, a, a, an extraordinary high amount. So, you know, we need to look at the single-use plastics, which are often the sort of things that end up in the, in the sea. We're also, as you probably know, banning microbeads. Uh, so that is new legislation that's currently uh, in the doll, which is a source of a lot of the, the, the microplastics that ends up in marine life. 
Well, th the way it will work is that we will look at every sector uh, of the economy where a contribution can be make, made. You know, waste, obviously, is one such sector. Uh, buildings and residences is another. We will also design a roadmap that we believe will get us to those targets over time. And the plan then will be overseen by the Taoiseach's office, so it will be uh, very much driven uh, with the authority of the Taoiseach. And people will have to commit to delivering their piece of the action by a certain date, so they will be monitored. So it will become a, a sort of a rolling mall each year. We will review it. If some things have been successful, we'll, we'll enhance them. If things haven't worked, we will we'll pull back. But at the end of the day, it really is about winning people over to convert to a different way of thinking about these things. And the other thing is that the government can't fund all the change. So there isn't enough money. There couldn't be enough money to make the changes uh, and pay people. So to some degree, people are going to have to accept that you know the price of tackling the global climate disruption that we're seeing, the impact that that will have on our own community and wider communities, it is a question of Ireland, a relatively wealthy country, taking responsibility. You know, if we're not meeting our responsibilities, we can't lecture people who've never had a, a chance to, to, to see development the way we've had. It's a challenge whose time has come. Uh, the window is fast closing when we can actually reverse the impacts or, or at least contain the impacts of, of climate change. If we don't act now, we will fail. And I think there is a growing uh, realisation of that. Small steps, as you said yourself, small changes, you know, make a big difference.